All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and for whatever reason, uh, before that, I guess I'm uh, I'm creating these this series of video presentations, and I'm doing my CSS now, and I can't get my list style image to work, and I'm not sure why, but it's not working. So I'm just I am going to go on, and I wanted to mention just a couple more things because this will probably be, hopefully, be a shorter lecture, and that is. I want to come in here and I want to do my ordered lists here. And I'm going to do my list style type. All right, and this will be my ordered list. All right, so this is going to look pretty ugly. All right, this is what I'm looking for here. All right, so. You've got numbers here, and that's the default. We've already talked about this, I think. So let's take a quick look. And let's say list style type, and we'll say here uh, upper alpha. And notice how it's changed. We can also come in here and do upper Roman. And again, you can see how that's changed. We can also do lower Roman. And there you see that. And lower alpha. And you can see that. Okay, just to throw those at you. And I'll come back and I'll do these as well. So let's come back here. And we will do, uh, t -t 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 -t. so I'm going to do O-L-L-I. And just to show you, I'm also going to do here U-L-L-I. Because now I've got the margin, et cetera, in there. And I, I'll come back to this one. And again, I'm not sure why this isn't working. But I'm going to put here. That can stay my OL, and this will become my UL, and we will just put this as circle. All right, and then when we look, now we've got the circle here. I would have to push these over, but and we've got our lowercase. Okay, so at least you've seen those. All right, I wanted to mention a little bit about the pseudo classes. So CSS pseudo classes and notice there's link etc and visited and hover etc let's just grab this so I'm going to grab all of that I'm going to put that in here as well to make this easier I'm going to remove what I just put in here which is those that ordered list and that unordered list so I'm going to get rid of both those Okay, then I'm going to come into my style here and remove that styling since they're not there anymore. My image isn't there anymore either, so just go and grab all that and replace that with this. All right, so you can see the different color links that we have in here. All right, so let's just put a paragraph in here. And this will say the link to Rankin technical college hope you enjoy all right the link to and then let's come back in here and let's a href equals https colon slash slash rankin dot edu all right so rankin technical college i'm moving this stuff over on purpose like this just so you can see it all right, so there you go. So let's go back to here and to here. And you'll notice the link to Rankin Technical College. Hope you enjoy. Okay? All right. So let's take a look and see then appear that the other things work. But we're, we're going to fix them anyway. So here was our styling. I don't know if I've saved or not, so I'm going to save. All right, so a visited link. Ideally, now will be green. 
So let's see, because that, that link has been visited already. So it's green. Notice when I put my mouse over it, it turns purple. All right, that purple is for when I hover. There's also an active, which I believe is when I click on it, but I haven't let go yet. So let's check that one. See, I've clicked on it, but I haven't let go. All right. And let's add one more because I want to show you something. Let's see if I refresh. No, that's not going to help any. All right. I'm going to add another paragraph in here just to show you this, and then we're going to be complete with this stuff. And I'm going to, again, add another paragraph right here. And it'll say, my link to Google. All right. Now, if this works the way I think it'll work, all right, that should be red. So let's see if indeed it is. There it is. Notice if I put my mouse over it, it turns purple, just like that does. After I click on it, which I'll do now, it'll go green. But if I do hold down on it, it's blue. Now, when I click on it there, it says cannot get to Google. That's okay. All right. I have to give it the actual path because it thinks that Google is on my current path, and it's not. So all I have to do is just change this to https colon slash slash www.google.com okay and notice it's now green because it's red google all right but what i wanted to mention to you with these pseudo classes is this is one that you haven't clicked yet it's an unvisited so that's the link tag this is one you have already clicked. So this is always blue by default. That's purple by default. Mouse over or hover is when you literally hover over it. And active is when you click on it, but you have not yet let go after you've clicked. And if you're going to do these, link, visited, hover, and active, do them in this order. All right? All right. So the last thing I want to talk about in here and it's good because this, like I said, this will be a shorter lecture. I'm going to type in here W3Schools CSS Positioning. All right. And I'm going to look at the position property right here. And you notice that there are five options. Static, which is the default, relative, fixed, absolute, and sticky. So let's look at each one of them. So as it says, HTML elements are positioned by default. So when you put something in there, it's not positioned in any way. It just goes, as it says, with the flow of the page. So when we look at the example that's here, this is what it looks like. So notice this div. They put a border around it, and they say that it's static. All right. Well, there's nothing special about saying that it's static. Notice this H2, we're also saying here is position static. All right, and this div is static, which means there's nothing special with it. It's just there. And again, that's the way that it is by default. Something that's positioned relative is positioned relative to its normal position. What does that mean? Well, when we look right here, We've got here, we're, we're positioning it relative left 30 pixels from where it typically is. So let's do this. Let's do it left, and we'll change it from 30 pixels to 50 pixels. And we will say, uh, let's see. And I'll put in here bottom 50 pixels. So that's basically what that is, is it's 50 pixels to the right and 50 pixels down from the top. 
Now you can see it, that didn't exactly do what I wanted it to do. But if I make it 150, all right, now it looks like it's probably covering that. How about 250? And it's not showing anything. All right, not sure why. But we can position stuff. And it says an element with position relative is position relative to its normal position. Let's go back and let's set everything the way that it was originally. All right. So you saw this. And instead of making it over here, you can see how big that is, left 30. Let's see what happens if we try making it right 30. You can see how it gets pushed over. Now it's 30 pixels from the right. You can see that? So what if we tried left 30, 30 pixels, and right 30 pixels? Why I keep doing that, I don't know. There you go. All right, and it didn't seem to like it, which is totally fine. Want that, I want this. How about fixed? When you look at something that's fixed, Notice it's fixed right there. Now, this may not look like a big thing, but I do want to show you something with this. All right, so it's fixed on the bottom. See that? And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab this paragraph. And I put it in 10 times. And I'm going to run this. And you'll notice that's still fixed on the very bottom. Now, in the olden days, maybe 10, 15 years ago, a lot of times when you had a document that you put out on the system, you'd put behind it something that was called a watermark. So it was a little, maybe your image or whatever, and it was very light. Sometimes you put it in the middle of the page. So if somebody tried to copy your stuff, all right, they wouldn't be able to, uh, you know, that watermark would remain there. So instead of saying this, position zero, right zero, all right, so let's try top zero and left zero, and let's see if it goes up here, right there. And you see that it has, and you see that it doesn't move. All right. There's also a position sticky. It says try to scroll inside this frame to understand how it works. Well, I want to come in there and I want to scroll. Well, it's, notice it's not letting me. All right. So let's look at this example. It says I am sticky. So notice it's right there. So by default, when you first start, it's got the padding around it, etc. But you're telling it when it reaches the top to stop right there. And a lot of times what people end up doing is they end up setting sticky for their headers or their footers so that they remain at the top or at the bottom. All right. What I've tried to do in this series is to go through a bunch of the CSS stuff. Did I miss things? Of course I did. All right. Are there things I wish I'd covered that I didn't? I'm not sure. I don't think, you know, I, I hope not. But I did go back over this CSS cheat sheet to try to make sure I covered some of the high points. And I think I've covered most of them. What I'm going to do next is a similar type of thing, but I'm going to be going through JavaScript. And I'm going to show you how to program. And I'm going to show you this in two ways. All right. For now, when we start off, I'm just going to write a simple program that won't do much. Then I'll write a more complex program that'll do quite a bit. Once I get done with that, we will build the site from scratch. I've already started on it, so I'll be back with that shortly.